Oh, man, I've been waiting. Let's see. How long have I been waiting? Well, that's a very good question. How long has Brian been waiting? <laughs> Brian's been waiting since about April 17th, 2013. So a while. Uh, so uh, I've been working on this class for a long time. And sort of when I, or now that we're kind of done, I wanted to spend a little bit of time, or not wanted to, I did spend a little bit of time thinking about how long I've been doing this. Uh, and you can see back, these, these are the very first books uh, that I ever read on DAX right here. Uh, you can see right here, this is my my email notification for when I signed up for Rob Colley's uh, very first Power Pivot University class. You can even see this is back when it was on chandu.org. Uh, so it's been a while. Uh, and also, my very first blog ever that I read on Power Query and M. And I don't know if you recognize the logo up here, uh, yeah. but this is Resus, right? So it's super exciting to be able to do this right after his presentation. That's super cool. So anyways, yeah, I've been here for a while. Uh, so, uh, how did I get to here is another good question. Uh, well, y'all know me, I'm Brian Grant, Senior Analyst Consultant with CSG Pro, uh, and I've been here for just over four years with the company. So, celebrating my four-year anniversary just a couple weeks back. Uh, if you go back far enough, I used to be a theater major in college. That was my original major. I studied theater for a long time. I uh, realized there aren't a lot of jobs in theater, so I decided that I was going to switch over and ended up finishing with a degree in economics. So, uh, how did I get to CSG Pro and how did I get to making this class? Well, um, after I graduated for a long time, for years and years and years, I, I worked in the event video business, right? Uh, and it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but uh, to be honest, like I, I hit the top of sort of where my job could go pretty quickly. And I spent a lot of time feeling kind of stuck. And uh, I, I really wanted to I really wanted to be able to go find a job uh, where I could do what I thought I was good at. And that was really hard uh, back then, and it is now. So uh, my, my approach was, based on uh, my degree in economics, which you know wasn't worth a whole lot in the job market, I thought I'd focus on Excel, which I did for a long time. I was going to be like an Excel pro. Um, the dogs are very excited about this presentation, by the way. Uh, and it... Excel was great. I really enjoyed learning it. Um, you know, Bill Jellen and Excel is fun. All those folks was really fantastic. Uh, but what I found is, uh, much like the econ degree, the Excel degree didn't really get you a lot. It didn't get me the options that I wanted. And, and what I found was I was trying to learn different, I don't know, kind of more advanced coding things. And what I discovered, assuming I can get PowerPoint to work here, uh, is that it, it felt like in the market, if, if you hadn't studied computer science, no one wanted to talk with you. Now, I know that's not true for everybody, and I'm not saying, saying that's like a blanket statement, but that's how it felt at the time. Because I didn't have a degree in computer science for a couple of years, I felt really stuck, and it was a really unpleasant place to be. I took a lot of classes, found a lot of classes online, uh, video classes, and, and a lot of them were very good. However, what I found is for the, the beginning stuff, the classes were great. Uh, however, once you got into anything, uh, I'll say advanced, but frankly, even intermediate, a lot of the classes felt like uh, if you didn't already know the material, you weren't going to do very well in the class. So the prerequisite for taking the class was having already known all the material in the class. And this was really frustrating. It felt like how in the world do you actually get your foot in the door? How in the world can you actually sort of level up your career and go do something that you're more interested in? Like get past that feeling of being stuck. So uh, for these classes, it was like, how do you get into the class, right? Because you have to already know the stuff. Well, what it felt like for people that I asked and talked to is the reality is for a lot of folks, the way that you got into this kind of business or you know anything involving coding was you had a good friend. Uh, you had a good friend who know how to do this stuff. They sat down, they talked to you like a human being, and they showed you how to do it. And once you got through that step, uh, you'd be able to go take those classes and do the trickier stuff. But if you didn't have that friend, uh, what could you do, right? And so after all of this, after all this work and after all these years, I've managed to get to a pretty good place. And, and in the process, when I'm developing content, what I really want to be more than anything else is that friend, right? Uh, the person who is willing to sit down with you and talk to you as if you don't already know it and show you how to learn something that you know you could do, I know you could do, um, but can be a little tricky to learn on your own. So that's sort of my general approach with all the stuff that I build. So uh, here's the story of the class, though, this Elements of DAX, this class that we're releasing tonight for the first time, right? Uh, and it starts back in late 2017. So there was a conversation uh, where Ron asked the question, uh, hey, uh, maybe we should build a class for DAX, which I guess is a statement. Should we build a class for DAX? Uh, to which Rachel replied, uh, yeah, that'd be great, but what do we put in it? And they both kind of looked at me, uh, and I said, 
maybe you could um, uh, have a bunch of problems and then uh, people work through them, uh, which is another way of saying we had no idea. We had no idea what would be in a DAX class, right? Uh, so that story, uh, Kata was on pause for a little while. And right around early 2019, uh, what I started to notice after seeing a lot of classes and even teaching a lot of classes is that a lot of trainings tried to uh, stick in too many concepts, lots and lots and lots of concepts, right? And I found that when people came out of the classes, um, they knew a little bit about a lot of things, but they couldn't, re couldn't really synthesize anything and actually get the job done that they needed to get done. So what I wanted to do back in early 2019 was create a, a really tight, contained economical list of only the most absolutely essential concepts in DAX. Uh, that way, people, when they're starting to learn DAX, they could pull up this list, right, which a lot of the folks in this room, in this virtual room, will remember, my nine pillars of DAX. You guys remember this from about a year ago, right? Uh, these were sort of the what I still need to learn bingo card that I wanted to create uh, so that when people were learning DAX, they knew what they didn't know. Now, uh, this stuff was great. Uh, and I spent probably, oh, seven months uh, building this deck out from start to finish. And then kind of right near the end, I thought to myself, oh, you know what? This is missing. I need a summary page. Whoopsie. Uh, I'll go spend five, 10 minutes creating a summary page. I go to create a summary page. Uh, and what I find is about halfway through it, I realized that this summary page was way better than the other whole rest of the presentation. But all that other stuff, yeah, that was fine and good. But really, the summary page was way better. And what I had to do, of course, is throw away all that other stuff and focus on what I had right here. So I said, all right, um, I've got this great summary page. How can I visualize this thing? And so I went away and I spent some more time creating what I called the DAX diamond, uh, which is this great visual that shows all the most essential part of DAX and sort of how it works visually. But it only makes sense if you already know DAX, which sort of defeats the entire point of this thing. So then I said, all right, uh, I'll create a, uh, a presentation in Excel. You guys have seen many of my presentations in Excel where I go through and sort of show the concepts. And that presentation, the Excel animation, went really well, but it was short, right? I convinced people that uh, this component method, which is what I called it then, was a good thing. And they were like, how can we know more? And I said, I have no idea. So I had to go out and record some videos, right? So uh, this was sort of right around the end of last year. And uh, what I did is over the holiday break, I recorded a bunch of videos. That's what I did with myself because it was cold. There was not a whole lot of other stuff to do, right? And uh, I recorded these. I ran them through probably around March recording all these guys. And uh, these videos were pretty good. Uh, however, uh, I asked people to visualize in their head way too much stuff. That was the feedback that I got from beta testers, among other really good bits of feedback. And so what I decided, um, you know, back a couple months back, is that I was going to switch to Excel to make everything uh, visible so that I could show what was happening because that was the missing piece of the puzzle. So uh, why is it so important to be able to see things? Uh, well, uh, to answer that, I'm going to reference both Chess and Bob Seeger in the same slide. So I hope you guys appreciate that. OK, so uh, <clears throat> let's imagine we're talking about Chess here, right? And uh, in Chess, the movements of the knight are very easy to understand, right? So let's imagine that we have a, a knight in Chess right, N, and it's stationed at the point F3, right? To imagine the movement of the knight stationed at F3, it can move in the L pattern demonstrated below, right? So from position F3, it could move to G1 and H2, right? And, you know, of course, obviously, if you look at that, you know that you could take that same exact pattern and recreate the following movement. So in addition to moving to G1 and H2, I can also move to G5, H4, E1, D1, D4, and E5. So based on that explanation, isn't it incredibly obvious how the knight moves? So I, I hope you guys thought that pun was worth it. Uh, so uh, what's the actual punchline, though? No one can understand chess by looking at this, right? If you look at this kind of chess notation and see these positions on the board written out like this, it doesn't help. You need to be able to see it, right? Once you can actually see the knight and say, oh, I get it. It moves in this L shape. Suddenly, it becomes very, very apparent. And that's what I wanted to do with DAX. I wanted to use Excel to make it nice and visual. All the element stuff was super duper important, but until I could actually show it to people visually, it didn't really connect. And that's what I spent the last couple months doing. So uh, with that, I want to show you guys a demo, right? So I'm going to sort of drop you right into the deep end. Um, now, again, you're in the deep end, so uh, don't expect to know everything yet. But what I want you to focus on and sort of get a sense of is what kind of stuff happens in this class. When I say that I'm going to show it to you, what do I mean by that? And watch uh, how hopefully little hand waving you see me do, right? It should be all up there on the screen, easy to see. So uh, to do this, I'm probably going to have to unshare my screen and then reshare because I just realized for this trick, you have to share your screen. 
but you have to do it with system audio. So give me a second. Hey, everybody. Okay, so there's the, no, don't do that. That's not what I wanted. Every once in a while, this works like I want it to. Team slows everything down, just when it gets good. Okay, so uh, hopefully this, oh, hey, there we go. There it is. There we go, beautiful, okay. So we're gonna throw you in the deep end just so you can see sort of what you get to find out if you sort of go through this course, right? This is right about in the middle, this is right where we start to introduce iterators, all right. And here we go. Right. Now, problem two is the exact same code, not similar, uh, not very close, the exact same code. The only difference is we're going to change the filter context, right? So again, we're going to drive all the visible rows of the mini table. We're going to add uh, a column where we take the units and we multiply it by the price per, and then we're going to sum up the results. But this time, the filter context should be type equals dine-in, okay? So uh, let's, let's simulate revising the filters. Right now, we're on type equals to go. We need to change it to type equals dine-in. So click type equals dine in, right? Now the filter context has a filter for type equals dine in. And if we ask for the visible rows of many, we just get the dine in rows. Speaking of which, that's what the code wants to do. It wants us to derive this table, uh, this column, and sum up the results. So let's go get all the visible rows of many. Let's click right there. Control C to copy. Click down here underneath where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste. Okay, go ahead and click in this cell. Okay, so we've derived our temp table. Now we need to add this column to it and sum up the results. This is the derivation part. This is the iterator part. Add column, sum up the results. Okay, let's go ahead and type in EXP. Go ahead, hit enter, right? That's the name of our temporary column. It's only gonna be around just long enough to sum up these results. Okay, so what is the formula? Well, just like above, for every single row, we get the units and we multiply it by the price per unit. So do an equal sign, click on units, Multiply it by price per unit. Go ahead, hit enter. Click on this cell. Hopefully your trackball is better than mine is. I'm having a lot of difficulty grabbing that. There we go. So left click and drag to copy that formula down. So we get seven for the first row, 11 for the second row, and 14 because we get one times seven, one times 11, and two times seven, just like our definition right there. Okay, so what do we do with the results? Uh, we're gonna sum them up because this is the sum x function. So click right there. Equal sign, sum, open parentheses, select those cells, closing parentheses, and hit enter. We get 32 bucks. So even though we run the exact same formula, up here we get 68 because this is to-go sales, and down here we get 32 because this is dine-in sales. Because we changed the filter context, when we derived the temp table, we got two different temp tables. This one's the to-go rows, this one's the dine-in rows. We add the same column to get sales for each row, and we sum up the uh, results both times to get 68 and 32. Okay. So that is just a little bit of a preview of the kind of stuff that you're going to be able to see in this class, right? So with that, we've got a little bit of uh, pomp and uh, circumstance here. Not demo time anymore. Does anybody know what time it is? Hey, what am I going to do right now? Anybody got an idea what I'm going to do on game this time? Slide? What's game that? Time. Is well, it game, game time, time, but there's the something stack I'm doing on this slide. Somebody's got to tell me. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. We'll be here it, till It's howdy duty time. What? Well, that's howdy duty time, too. But it's something. What am I going to do? What is this thing that's on the screen right now? Uh, is it? Is it a ribbon? It's, it's a, a ribbon. ribbon cutting ceremony. We're going to cut the ribbon. Are you guys ready? ready? Yes. Give yes. it to us. Brian. Go. go boom. We're live. <laughs> Elements of Dax. You can go watch it now. Hey, Brian, I think it went live an hour ago. Stop raining on my parade, right? It's my big day. We're live. Go check it out. Go see it. And please let us know what you think, okay? I'd really like to thank everybody at CST Pro for making all of this possible. You've all been fantastic, especially Rachel Dyer, uh, my partner in crime throughout all of this. And an extra special thanks to all of the beta testers. You guys were fabulous. You donated your time. You were very, very giving. And you made this class so much better. I can't thank you enough. So uh, I know Paul's got to go, so I'm going to keep this nice and short. Thanks so very much for everybody. Please check out the video, uh, and, and I'll see you probably at the next presentation.